Hello everyone, this is part 1 on how to make a tower defense game in Scratch. In this tutorial, I will be creating the enemies as well as the paths for the enemies to follow. Now before we get started, I just want to say that this tutorial series is a bit more on the advanced side because there will be cloning and lists involved, but I will try to make it as simple as possible so that it's not too difficult to follow and hopefully by the end of the series you will better understand how lists and cloning works, and of course have a tower defense game. Anyways, let's get started. So first, of course, we need a path for the enemies to follow. So I'm going to create one by first going to the stage, and then going to backdrops, and then to make the path, I'm going to first select the line tool, and then drag it across the drawing window over here. And I think I'm going to make the path start from down over here, and then end somewhere over here. Alright, and then now I'm going to use the reshape tool, to click anywhere on the line to create more points, and then that way I can create a curvy path. So if I just drag the point, then I can move it, and then if I drag the handles, then I can change the steepness of the curve. All right, so now I have my path down, and now I'm gonna select my path, and then change this outline number right here to something like, um, let's say, 80. Okay, maybe 90. Alright, cool. So now the path is much wider. And I think I'm going to also change the fill color of the path to something like a brown. Oops, sorry. I meant the outline color. So I'm going to change the outline color to a brown color. Um, so something like this. Okay, a bit darker. Alright. And then I think I also want to add a green background. So I'm going to select this rectangle tool and then draw it over my entire drawing area. And then I'm going to first take out the outline. So I'm going to click this. And then for the fill, I'm going to make it a green color. So it's going to sort of look like grass. Alright, and then I'm going to select a rectangle, and then click the backwards button right here. And now we have sort of like a grass field and a dirt path. And I think I'm going to change the colors a bit more, so... And now that we're done with the path, let's begin creating our enemy. So first off, let's go to our cat sprite, and then I'm going to go to costumes, and delete all of the current costumes. And now for the enemy, I think I'm just going to start with a simple circle. So I'm going to select the circle tool. And then I am going to hold shift while pressing down to create a perfect circle. And then I'm going to center it. All right. And I think for the enemy, I'll make it a orange color. So something like this. And for the outline, I will have a brown outline. So, something like this. Alright, cool. And now we have our enemy. So, I'm going to first show the enemy. Alright. And then I'm also going to name it enemy. And then I'm going to position it somewhere down here. Okay. And I also think it's a bit too large. So, I'm going to make the size something like 60. And, okay. I think that looks fine. So now, of course, the next thing we want to do is to make the enemy move. And to make the enemy follow this curved path we have, we are going to need an invisible line to guide the enemy along this path. So to start, let's go to the stage and copy our current path. So I'm going to select this and then Control C. And then I'm going to create a new sprite. So paint, all right. And then paste, so Control V. And now we have our second path. So this is going to be the line which the enemies follow. So I'm going to select this, and then I'm going to take out all of the outline. Or actually, I'll leave some in. So I'll make the outline something small, like 6. All right. And then I'll also make the outline color a white color, just to make it clear that this is the path the enemy follows. And then I'm also going to go to the code, and then go to motion, and then drag a go to x y block and I'm going to change this to go to x0 and y0 alright 
and now your line should be directly on top of your path. This is going to be the line that guides the enemy. Um, I'm going to keep the line shown for now, but we can hide it later once we're done coding the enemy movement. Now let's go to our enemy sprite and go to costumes, and then I'm going to create two detection boxes for the enemy. So let's duplicate the enemy costume twice, so right click duplicate, and then inside of the first costume, I am going to create a rectangle. So I'm going to first choose a fill. I'm going to make the rectangle blue. All right. And for this rectangle, I'm going to have no outline. So I'm going to click this. OK. And now I'll draw a small rectangle like this. And I am going to position this rectangle so that it's in front of the enemy. So somewhere around here. And in this case, I am imagining that the enemy is facing towards the right. And then I'm also going to move this rectangle slightly above the middle of the enemy. So as you can see, it's not here, but it's slightly above the middle part. So somewhere around here. All right. And then I'm going to delete the enemy image. So now for the second detection box, I'm going to copy the first rectangle and then go to costume two and then paste it. And then I'm going to make this a red color. So go to fill and then change it to red. And by the way, these colors are not necessary, but I'm just choosing two different colors to know which detection box is which. Anyways, I'm now going to move it so that it's slightly below the middle of the enemy. So right around here. All right. And then I'm going to delete the enemy image. All right. So now we have our two detection boxes for the enemy like this. And these are going to check if they're touching the white line. And if they are, then they're going to rotate the enemy back into place so that it's always following the white line. And this way, the enemy will follow the path and turn if necessary. By the way, I'm also going to copy and paste these detection boxes in the real enemy costume so that we can see how the line detection works. All right, cool. So this is our enemy, and these two are the line detection boxes. So now let's go inside of the code and then let's drag a when flag clicked. Then I'm going to show the sprite. And then I'm going to, of course, make the enemy start over here. So that is negative 133 and Y negative 172. All right. And then I'm also going to make the enemy point in the direction of the white line. So as you can see right now, the two detection boxes are not facing towards the white line. So I have to drag a point in direction block, and then I'm going to change this to point in direction um, zero. All right. And then I also am going to move the enemy a bit to the right. So maybe negative 127. OK, so now, as you can see, the white line is now perfectly in between the two detection boxes. And now let's go back. And then when the flag is clicked, I'm also going to switch costume to costume three. So that is the enemy costume. All right. So now for the enemy movement, I'm going to create a new block. And then I'm going to call this something like um, enemy movement. All right. And then click OK. And now we are going to do all of the line detection code in here. So first off, we have to go to variables. And then I'm going to create two new variables. The first one is going to be uh, move speed. So this is how fast the enemies will move. And I will select for the sprite only. So click this and then click OK. All right. And then for the next one, I'm going to create a variable called turn speed. And then I will select for the sprite only. And then I'll click OK. All right. So first off, inside of the enemy movement block, I am going to go to motion and then drag a move 10 steps. And then I'm going to go to variables and drag a move, move speed steps. So under the when flag clicked, I can set the move speed variables and turn speed variables to whatever I want. So let's say if I have a move speed of like four and turn speed of eight, then the enemy will move four steps. And it will also turn eight degrees when we code in the rotation. So now back inside of the enemy movement block, I am going to first go to looks and then drag a switch costume to block. And then I'm going to change this to switch costume to costume one. So this is the blue detection box. So for this one, 
we are going to check if the enemy is currently, and then go to sensing, touching the white line or sprite 1, then the enemy is going to turn to the left or counterclockwise, turn speed degrees. All right. And then now for the other detection box, we can just right click duplicate and then switch costume to costume 2, which is the red detection box. And then it will also check if it's touching sprite 1. And if it is, then the enemy will turn to the right or clockwise turn speed degrees. All right. And then at the very end, let's switch costume to costume 3. So what happens is that all of these blocks should run immediately after one another, so the detection box costumes are never going to show because the enemy always switches to the real costume at the end. However, the detection boxes will still do their job and the blue one will check when to turn left or counterclockwise, and the red one will check when to turn right or clockwise. So I think that should work. And one last thing, let's go to control, drag a forever loop, put it after the wind flag clicked, and then let's go to my blocks and drag the enemy movement block inside of the forever loop. All right, cool. So let's try it out. If I click the green flag, so as you can see, the enemy is following the white line and the red and the blue detection boxes are preventing the enemy from going outside of the white line, like so. And also one thing to keep in mind is that this doesn't always work the first time. Um, for example, like if I set the move speed to 8 instead of 4, then the enemy is going to move too fast, and then the line detection might not always work. As you can see, it did not properly detect right there, and then the enemy went out of the line. So if your enemy movement does not work, like if it goes out of the track or something, there are several ways for you to check and see what's wrong. So first off, make sure the enemy is pointing in the right direction. So your detection boxes over here should be on the two sides of the white line. And if they aren't, then you should rotate your enemy so that they are. And secondly, try decreasing your enemy move speed or increasing your enemy turn speed. And I would say having a turn speed of around double the amount of your move speed is a good number to have, but you can play around with it. So for example, if I have a move speed of 6, I'm going to try a turn speed of 12. And then if I try the enemy, then as you can see, it should work. All right, cool. Looks good. All right, nice. So it worked. Let me try a move speed of 10 and turn speed of 20. It's not going to look as good, but um, all right. So that seemed to also work. But I would suggest having a slower move speed, and that way the enemy turns would look more smooth. And if everything still does not work, try making sure your line is smooth and try decreasing how much the track turns. So make sure to not have any sharp edges or anything like that. Anyways, now that we're done with the enemy movement, we can now hide the white line. So inside of the looks, we can grab a set color effect to zero block, and then I'm gonna change this to set ghost effect to 100. And pretty much this just makes the line invisible, but it still allows the enemy to touch the line. So I'm going to drag a when fly clicked and then put it after everything. All right. And then I'm also going to go to looks and drag a show block just in case. And now that should be fine. And then for the enemy sprite, I am going to go to the costumes and take out the red and blue colliders in the third costume. So the first costume is going to have the blue collider, second one's going to have the red one, and then third one is going to have your actual enemy sprite. All right, so now if you try it again, then everything should work as normal. Okay, we have the enemy, and then it's touching the white line, but the line is not shown, so... All right, and then it should complete the track. Okay, cool. So now, of course, we also want the enemy to hide once it touches the edge of the track. So let's go to the code. And then I'm going to drag another when flag clicked. And then I'm going to go to control, drag a forever loop. And then before that forever loop, I am going to drag a wait until block. And I'm going to check wait until not. And then sensing, 
touching and change this to edge. All right. And then inside of the forever loop, I am going to always check if and then duplicate this touching the edge, then hide. So go to looks and then hide. All right, cool. So of course, since the enemy is touching the edge of the screen when it spawns, we are going to ignore that until it stops touching the edge. And then once it touches the edge again, that means the enemy left the track. So we're going to hide it. So let's try it out. And now, as you can see, it should work. So once it touches the edge over here, then it should hide. So almost there. And it is hidden. All right, cool. So now that we have one enemy down, let's now create multiple enemies. And this is actually pretty simple. All we have to do is go to control and then drag a repeat loop. And then inside of that repeat loop, let's drag a create clone of myself and also a wait one seconds. And then I'll change this to something like wait uh, 0.2 seconds. And then I will take away everything under this when flag clicked and then drag this under the when flag clicked. And I am not going to show the original enemy sprite. So I'm going to go to looks and then drag a hide block and put it right before the repeat 10. All right. And then now for this part, we are going to put this under a when I start as a clone. So let's go to control. And then I'm going to drag a when I start as a clone. And then I'm also going to replace this when fly clicked with a when I start as a clone. And now everything should be fine. So let's try it out. All right, here are our enemies. And as you can see, we have 10 enemies going around the track. And they should disappear once they reach the end. And all right, cool. And they do. All right, so I think I am going to increase the move speed of the enemies a bit. So maybe from three to four. And let me try the same turn speed of six. So let's try it out. OK, here are our enemies. And I think a turn speed of six is working fine. So I'll leave it at that. And there we go. All right, cool. So now we have a simple and very customizable enemy movement system along with our track. Anyways, that's it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, then give it a thumbs up and subscribe too if you haven't already. In the next tutorial, I will begin creating some turrets to shoot the enemies. By the way, this project is shared on my Scratcher file. Link is in the description below. Anyways, that's it for this video. See ya!